Thoughts and feelings go straight out to Rui Patricio after suffering a severe head injury towards the end of the game this evening between Wolverhampton Wanderers and Liverpool Football Club. Clashed uh, A clash between him and his centre-back, Connor Cody, led to a serious injury which created a 12-13 minute delay to this game. And uh, as I say, thoughts and feelings go straight out to Rui Patricio after suffering a severe head injury uh, in the Premier League game this evening. Liverpool, of course, walk away with all three points, courtesy of a goal of Diogo Jota, former Wolverhampton Wanderers striker as well. And Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp set down a marker. Still a number of points away, five, six points away from a top four position. But with nine games to go in this Premier League season, we are set for an amazing ride, an exhilarating end. As the, as the crescendo really kicks in, it is going to be an absolutely amazing watch. There is no doubt about that whatsoever. Tottenham Till I Die here says, Good evening, Terry. I hate AFTV for celebrating Son's pulled hamstring yesterday and always come on you Spurs. Do you know what? I think, yeah, ce celebrating any player getting injured is never a good look. And I think moments like tonight really make you wake up and, and, and think about that in many, in, in many ways, really. And, Listen, a pulled hamstring cannot be compared to a serious head injury that Rui Patricio has, has suffered tonight. Um, but I totally get your thoughts and feelings there. There's no doubt about it. Um, I want your thoughts, your feelings on the game as well. How well did Liverpool play? It's five points off top, is it? Then there we go. Pray for Patricio. Lots of words of support coming in here. Absolutely. But of course, this head injury to Rui Patricio is going to really kick up a fuss in terms of debate and conversation. Because there are lots of people now that have said this VAR ruling, this this want, this almost this, this obsession with getting the offside decisions 100% correct. The referees not blowing their whistles and flags not going up until the end of that phase of play. They always said it would end with a player getting seriously injured. And is that what we have just seen today? Could this be the straw that breaks the camel's back with VAR in its entirety? Or, or at the very least, could we see major changes to the offside rule? I want your thoughts and feelings on that. The link for you to call in will be shared very, very soon as well. There was another big talking point this evening. Should Wolverhampton Wanderers have had a penalty two minutes into this game? We had Semedo. I, I, I can't really understand, for me, why a penalty wasn't given. Can't understand it. The, the goalkeeper, Ellison, drops the ball. The ball strikes, Semedo goes away from both the keeper and the player. The player can easily get onto it. He's got a shot for an open goal and the goalkeeper clatters through him. No penalty given. I felt Wolves were a little bit hard done by there. There was no doubt about that whatsoever. But is that, you know, is that normal? Two minutes into a game, was it for you a clear penalty? An obvious penalty? Did referee make a mistake? I want your thoughts and your feelings on that as well. Plus the top four race. Liverpool, can you make it? That's what we want to hear from you about tonight. Liverpool in the top four race. Should Wolves have had a penalty? Were Liverpool lucky in that regard? And this horrible injury to Rui Patricio, could this cause a big debate in relation to the offside element of football, which has been... It's been contentious for the majority of this season. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. So I want your thoughts and feelings. Ryan here says it's a penalty where John says, stop crying. It's not so much crying. It's asking a question. If that's your response, that tells me all I need to know. George says, worse refereeing. Um, Liverpool heading for the Europa League is what one person thinks here in relation to that. The United Terrace on suicide watch not really bro <laughs> i was probably outside of liverpool fans last year i praise liverpool more than anything um we always praise liverpool when they're good we criticize them when they're bad and tonight i thought you were deserved winners we haven't even got to that point yet i think you probably deserved it overall but it was a contentious penalty liverpool legend jamie Carragher said it was a penalty so i want to gauge your views and opinions if you want to throw abuse for asking to have a conversation that tells me a lot about yourselves. Man like Aaron here says, I'll take three points today. That's most important. We weren't great. The injury could have been avoided, in my opinion. The goal was clearly offside to the, the naked eye. And this happens often Play when players play to the whistle. I suppose that's where the, the rule needs to be looked at. 
is it clear? Is it a clear and obvious offside? If the referee isn't sure and it's marginal, I can understand them keeping the flag down. But we have seen a number this year where a player has been two, three, four yards offside and play has been allowed to continue. Uh, so maybe they have to look at adjusting that rule um, somewhat moving forward. We have another comment here that says 100% a penalty. Uh, Lewis here says no penalty, natural movement. Yeah, I can understand why you would say it's natural movement. So if a defender comes out and a natural approach to close the ball down and the defender knocks the ball past him and the natural movement of the defender hits him in, into the attacker, would you say that's a penalty? It's still an infringement, whether it's, in, whether it's intentional or not. Um, most pros I've seen so far have said it should have been a penalty, but I do want your views and I do want your opinions. Uh, Winner Paul here says, Terry, shame we have an international break just when we started to play well. Yeah, sometimes that's the way things go. You, you start to find a little bit of form and you don't really want to do that. Uh, 11 points ahead, but United fans still obsessed with Liverpool. That's rivals for you, bro. That's what rivalry is about. If we all if we all lost the obsession for each other's teams, I'm, I'm telling you now, we'd all stop. What, you know, people say, I watch football for entertainment. Trust me, if rivalry disappeared tomorrow, if Harry Potter come out and did some little spell, I don't know what it'd be called, like, I don't know, Expelabantius or whatever, and there was no more rivalry, no more tribalism within football, we'd hate it. The sport would be dead. It'd be dead in an instant. There's no doubt about that. Sam here says, buzzing with the win. Let's keep going. Let's not slip up. Poor choice of words. I know Nat Phillips um, would head by his nan to stop a goal. Pray for Patricio. Do you know what? I'm really impressed tonight with Quebec and with Nat Phillips. Two games running where I think they've looked fairly solid. Wolves did have some chances where they could have put the ball in the back of the net towards the end. But for a team, you know, you know why they're in the position they are this year. Only 14 goals from open play all season. Simply not, simply not good enough. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. Just not good enough um, in its entirety um, at all. Uh, Terry, uh, did you listen to Thierry Henry's masterclass on Mane during halftime? All parents with kids who want to be strikers should look. I did listen to that. Yeah, great analysis from him. I also love what he said earlier on as well in the night, Thierry Henry, where he spoke about Man City and how they don't rely on one one or two individual players. When you have to rely on one or two players, if they go, your, your system falls down. And I think he's right. But I also think it was one of the most obvious things I've ever heard in my life. The reason that City are so dominant and Bayern Munich so dominant, domestically I'm talking, is because... They just have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve players they can rely on to that top class or world class category, which means you never have one outstanding player that's head and shoulders in front of everybody else. And when I think back to the great Chelsea, great Man United, great Arsenal teams of years gone by, they had the same. But yeah, great analysis as always. And what I mean by that, when I say it's basic from Omri, I think it was a nice message out there to the to the system buds. And of course, there's a great system but it's enhanced by having brilliant players surrounding it as well. The bill here says, you think natural movement is justifiable. Remember when Pogba blocked the ball with his hand um, when it was about to hit his face, that was a hundred percent a penalty. Yeah. I don't think natural movement is a def is defensible. What if he landed on Samido's leg and busted his knee? Do you know what I mean? Th th there's very often little intent from players to injure anybody, but just because it's an accident doesn't mean it's not a foul a foul. I don't think anyway. That's just my humble thoughts and my humble opinions. Uh, oh, Brian here says United Terrace. Oh, bless your little heart. Sorry, mate. Uh, Terry, you are not sorry. You are not going to do anything about the fan making fun of depression shambles of a channel, allowing it to court because United fan. What? Who made fun of depression? Who did? I have no idea what you're talking about. Show me who, show me what person did that, and we'll have a conversation about it, my friend. Uh, well, I've got no idea what you're talking about at all. Uh, let's go forward here. Let's do a few more comments, and we're going to get some of the panel on for you. Please make sure you're smashing that like button as well. Congratulations to Varchester United, who finished second place. Hope they win a trophy for that. That's a weird comment tonight. Trent and Quebec played well. Yes, they did. Um, yes, they did. Both very, very good indeed. I'm fuming. Why didn't we play Phillips from the start? Oh, Henderson is English, of course, is what Tony said. Do you know what's interesting? Again, I got slated for this by Liverpool fans when I blamed Jurgen Klopp for just not playing two centre-backs together this whole time you've had injuries. 
continuing to rotate and twist and change. As soon as he's created a little bit of a pairing, there's a bit more harmony and within some games, keeping some clean sheets. It's uh, it's pretty normal. It's pretty normal there indeed. Uh, let's do a few more of these comments here before we get people involved on this. Thoughts and prayers with Rui Patricio. Absolutely. Terry, if we are speaking about facts, can a Premier League count if you don't have a parade? <laughs> of course it can. Of course it can. Uh, leave, Terry. You want me to leave my own stream? That's weird. <laughs> That's one of the weirdest comments we've ever had on the football terrace. Strange but true. Absolutely strange but true. Uh, prayers for Patricio. Di Maria and Marquintos. And I heard about Di Maria. I'm not, Marquintos was his family with Di Maria's or something. I don't know uh, the SP on that. I didn't read the news on that one today, unfortunately. But there we go. Let's get some of the panel on for you. Make sure you're hitting that like and that share button for me. Really important to the terrorists that you do that. Yeah, a lot of laughing emojis. Man said leave. Can you imagine? Leave Terry. Imagine coming to the football terrorist but not liking me. <laughs> That's the best. That is honestly... If that person has the confidence to phone in and tell me why he wants me to leave, I'll give him a hundred pound live on the air. When I open the line, if you've got the confidence to come on and say that, I will give you a hundred pounds live on the air because that's actually made me happy that you come with that. Uh, and that person who said that we're allowing Man United fans to attack people with depression or something, um, please let me know who did that and watch me come down at like a ton of bricks, ton of bricks. But there we go. Let's get the panel involved now, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the panel on here. Make sure you're smashing that like and that share button. And let's do this, people. Let's do this. Evening, gents. Evening, gents. Continuing the winning trail. Um, thoughts on the performance, first of all, Comrade? Hey, to be honest, Terry, I don't think we learned a lot from that game. I didn't think it was a great standard. I thought... Both teams are quite poor on the ball, especially in midfields. Uh, I thought Trent was probably one of the match for Trent. We had a very good game defensively, probably the best game I've seen him defensively. Um, Wolves had chances, Liverpool had chances. If you come off that game thinking we're going to go on a massive run, I don't know what to tell you because I thought I didn't. I didn't think we're very good tonight. To be honest, I think it was a a bit like the Leipzig game. Don't think it was a great standard day. Both teams weren't very great on the ball. Gave the ball away quite easily not great control and some of the commentators were saying there was control in the game i don't know what game they were watching i thought it was quite a poor standard and i mean obviously you're buzzing with the win and it, to me it felt like uh again though i've got to give credit to the defense but the defense were good Kabak especially tonight phillips was good again i think like it, we're grinding out results it was a scrappy win but we got it which is great which is great but i don't want liverpool fans coming on here saying this is the start of the turn we're going to make top four because you can tell they're desperate they got they're desperate sky sports to sell the point oh they're going to make the top four i'm like you've not watched any liverpool games in the past month if, if you think that but happy with the win but i'm not going to get gassed off that i didn't think it was particularly good to be honest mate i thought it was quite a poor standard of football how about yourself safe i mean the top four race is the big thing. Of course, Sky want to sell it. They, they they need a race. They need a race because the title's over. Relegation looks almost set. Um, do you think you can turn it round? To be Just honest, boring. as much as I want to say, yeah, like after looking at today's performance, it's, you, we ain't going to win many games playing like this. Like we, The fact, the only reason I feel like we got away with today is because Wolves just didn't turn up themselves. And it's just upsetting because before the game, I was hyped up. I was just like, all right, this is the start. Uh, this is the starting eleven we've been waiting for and stuff like that. And then, literally, I don't know how long it took, like fifteen minutes before we started getting into the game. And then, even then, it wasn't even like steadily getting into it or nothing like that. So, to be honest, performances like this, we're going to lose. We're going to drop so many more points the rest of this season. And it's just, I know we've won, but I sound so upset or whatever. But it's just, you expect more from Liverpool, right? And uh, top four ain't happening. I'll tell you that much now. Well, do you know? I feel like you want me to believe it. I feel like you want me to believe no, it. I, I, it's not so much that. I just want the truth from people, and I, mm -hmm. I like people telling me what they re really think and feel. I, I suppose it's one of these things. They always happy with that. If wolves could finish their dinner, if they could finish their dinner, they could, they should have equalised tonight. They had the opportunity at the end, and, and Fabio Silva misses his opportunity. So it wasn't a. It's another one. It was another win for yourselves where it wasn't scintillating. It wasn't Liverpool at their absolute best. But 
you got the job done. I suppose the, the, the point is that you're only five points away and so many teams have had good and bad runs this season. It's so up and down, if that makes sense, that who knows? All it takes is, you know, like a little, you know, win another two on the bounce as an example and Chelsea just draw one of those games and suddenly it's, it's one win away from potentially being inside of it. Um, it's going to be a tough one, but... I want to ask you a question about the penalty. I want to go to Ram first on this. Do you think it was a penalty? Should they have, should they have had a penalty in the opening two minutes, Wolves? Yeah, definitely. I think that was a pen. I don't know, 100%, how, we got, I don't pen. know how we got away with that. I tell you, Jürgen Kopp might have paid the uh, VAR on the ref today. Maybe, maybe. But for sure, that was definitely a penalty. I don't know how we got away with that. <laughs> you can well, maybe argue the ball was going a different way, but you can't you can't put your arm across a player well, in the box. Well, maybe you can't because, do he's, that. because he's falling down as well. They're like, ah, oh, he's falling down. I don't know, but it's still a pen. It's still a pen at the end of the See, day. See, because the keeper's fumbled that he's put himself in that position. So I thought they were always going to give a penalty there because he's made the mistake. You know, if a keeper like um, a player takes around a keeper and the keeper makes any contact to the player and it goes down, they always give a penalty. So I don't even know why they didn't look at that, to be honest. I felt it was a case of it was two minutes in. And I think that we did two things with VAR. And where VAR, I, I was a big supporter of it to begin with because I felt that when it first came in, it was really, and it's still done this on a number of occasions this season, it was rectifying really bad mistakes. That there was a really bad mistake. But what they've done is they've changed the protocols where unless the, it's almost that the VAR is there now to protect the referees and not the football match. So if the referee doesn't give it, it's almost like the referees association have said, well, we're not going to overturn it because it, it will go down on the, on, on, on the, on the book as a, as a smudge against this, this referee's name that he made a mistake in the game. And it was the way he did it as well. The way he sort of went, no, and he, turned his back and made a rule. He was big about game. to blow the whistle, Terry. He was, he was about to blow the whistle. He made a massive gesture as, uh, to say nowhere near um, a penalty. And then there was no more looking at it or no real big focus on it. They didn't ask him to stop. And I feel that they've kind of changed that protocol now to protect referees as opposed to doing what VAR for me was invented for. And that was to ensure that the right footballing decision was made. And it should have been a penalty. There's no, there, there was just no doubt about it. This kind of notion that it was his natural movement. Okay. The other day, Man United had a goal disallowed because Victor Lindelof rightfully went up for the ball and the player just was in his way. His natural movement made him clash into the guy, but it's still a foul. It's yeah, it, it was it was a shocking one for me. It really, really was. There's no doubt about it. We've got a super chat here that says only good thing about today was the result, but the performance was not great. We couldn't keep the ball at Wolves. Sorry, Wolves lacked. Um, productivity in the final third. That's very true. Do you think, Com Comrade, if you were up against an Arsenal tonight who you play very, very soon, do you think if you give Arsenal that many opportunities in the box with Obama, Yang, Saka, Lacazette, they could punish you? Oh, absolutely. As I say, Wolves were very poor on the ball as well. So that's two games in a row that we're all going and getting gassed. Leipzig were poor on the ball. They gave the ball away a lot and so did Wolves. Make it like a basketball game. I mean, honestly, the, the way they tried to control the ball tonight, the midfield was atrocious. I mean, if that's another game, there'll be a lot of fans hounding Thiago after because he must have gave the ball about five times tonight. He had some good moments as well, don't get me wrong. But again, not impressed by him tonight. I think he will come good, but he's he's pushing his time because some of the performances he's had are just... He's, I can't believe how wasteful he is for, for for someone who I've watched previously. He's just He's been so wasteful recently. But as I say, Terry, I just I feel like not even at Arsenal, I'd say any team... Like look at Fulham, who's got an identity and know have a, have a can follow their manager's tactics quite well. Will hurt Liverpool at the moment. I, I'm sorry, guy. I don't know if you disagree, guys, but for me, I've I'm not seeing anything that's changing my I, opinion on our performance uh, at the moment. To be I'm honest, oh sorry, go on, go on. Sorry, sorry. To be honest, uh, the goal that we scored was a was a piece of like decent play from. Um, from Mane, Salah, and Jota, and no, it was, finished, it was good. Mate. It was good. It was, it was okay. It was an okay finish. He did what he had to do. Low, hard. Maybe Patricia could have done better, but other than that, Mane missed two sitters. Well, the first one he didn't even have a shot at, which is completely stupid. Um, the passing was off. I think our best player today, attacking wise, was probably Thiago. And then again, he wasn't that great as well. Yeah, don't worry. It was a bad game, Ram, but he had he had about four or five times we gave the ball away, and if exactly. you lose that game, fans are just going to hammer on him. I'm not saying he was terrible, but 
he just has moments. He's so erratic. Like this notion that he's he's not a good tackler. He's never he's not good at tackling. He's actually pretty poor at it. He must make about three, four fouls a game. Not good fouls, bad time fouls. And they're like, oh, he gets stuck in. <laughs> this guy was voted in the Champions League team of the year. I don't want him to get stuck in. That's he's meant to be intelligent. Oh, just. Do you know yeah. what with Thiago? I I really feel like, and it may be a bit of a cliche to many people, but. I think he's suffering like a lot of uh, players from from the continent and and from abroad have suffered within the past, where their first season they're just not at it pace wise. I don't think he's necessarily a bad tackler. I saw some statistics that show he's tackles sort of success rate or the amount of fouls he's given away in tackles, and you just see this year it's like sp- it's off the off the chart in terms of how bad his timing of tackles is. And for me. That's the speed of the Premier League, and he's got to, uh, he's got to get used to that. And he's got he should be smarter, Terry, though, in the sense of he knows he can't keep with it, but he, he still keeps trying these challenges. This is like a continuous theme, and you'd think for a player his intelligence, he'd, he'd know, know not to do that. Yeah, I, I think so, but there's, I think there's, there's, there's muscle and mind memory. in his, When you're in the motion in the game, I think he just feels he's, he's playing football. It doesn't matter where he is, and it's not until you're going in for the tackles, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm half a yard to, a bit behind the play here, and... It's interesting listening to Timo Werner uh, did an interview a few months ago and he just said the speed and the physicality of the league here is like nothing I've experienced before. And it's on a weekend like where in European football, both sort of European competition and domestically, just you, you can't do those things. It isn't as fast. It's slower pace and people don't smash into you as hard. And I think that it's maybe taking Thiago a little bit of time to adjust and, he'll, and he will come good. Um, yeah, he will, Ram, definitely will. From your point of view, Ram, top four, do you think it can happen? I don't know. I honestly don't know. We're relying on a, a lot of teams to drop a lot of points, and um, the teams that are already occupying the top four places. They don't look like they're going to drop any points. City, obviously, they've got the league done and dusted. Um, Leicester City are in a good moment. Man United, they're shooing for top four. Chelsea is the only realistic person that's going to drop out, and but even then, they they're in a very very good vein of form. So it looks very unlikely, but. I don't. I don't want to end the season going off. Or oh, what if we did? What if we tried a bit harder in the Premier League? At least we go into the Premier League trying to win every single game. At least giving the best shot of ourselves. That's the main thing, really. But it doesn't look likely. How detrimental do you think it could be for your sort of summer transfer activity not having Champions League football? Oh, it'd be massive. It'll be massive. Um, a lot of players, a lot of elite players, all want to play in the best, uh, the best competition, the Champions League not the Europa League or even the Conference League. So getting Champions League is, is, is massively important, especially with the season that, especially with the transfer window that we need to have. And also the money that the Champions League has is going to be important for the club. But we have to wait and see if, if, if we do anything. How about yourself, Comrade? Can you, can, do you think that you could attract the, the Mbappes, the Haaland's, the Sancho's that your, your fans have been talking about for over a year now. Do you think that's plausible with no top four? And if you can't get those kind of players and you, the likes of Man United and Chelsea and City improve further, do you think you can bounce back next year and get back into the top four? I want to say that I don't necessarily feel like, I don't think we're going to get top four anyway. So I'm kind of looking at that's already been decided. Uh, but I would say, Terry, I did hear Klopp's interview the other day and he said if, if players don't want to stay because we're not in the Champions League, then I don't want them to play for my team. So in a sense, there might be a, a opposite from that. If we don't make it, I'd, it might happen. I'm kind of 50-50 that it actually might force FSG to spend a bit more in the sense of they've tried to blag it for the past couple of years by not fully uh, cementing the squad. And then you might find that they'll be forced to use their own money in the summer. And I'm, but Terry, when I say Liverpool spend money, I'm not talking about Haaland and Mbappe. I'm thinking, you know, maybe just an overall 80 to 100 million on a couple of players just to bulk the squad up and improve the depth. I think that'll happen. I don't think Liverpool are ever going to be in the market for a ha- especially a Haaland. Um, I'd say Mbappe as well is not going to happen. So, I still think we'll be able to attract players, but I would say I would be worried if we didn't have Klopp that we'd go back into obscurity like the times, you know, with Rodgers uh, and previous to that. But because if we've got Klopp, I'm not necessarily worried. And I think we can make top four, but I do agree that I feel like Liverpool fans need to accept it from now on. It's not going to be a, we'll, we'll bounce back. Well, if we do bounce back next year to challenge for the title, I'd be very surprised. For me, it's going to be, we, 
get a few players in, build up a conference again, and then obviously go for the top four next year. But then it'll be a title push for the next couple of years, a bit like what we've yeah. done previously. I hear you on that. We've got a super chat here from Tottenham um, until I die, who says, I'm hoping the Wolves keep a speedy recovery. Absolutely. The hope is, it's jaw, not skull. It looked more jaw. Yeah. The replay back, and, and that's of, of course it still led, led to him being unconscious. You've got to hope that, that, that there's been no complications there. Uh, but I'm hoping there's not sort of a skull fracture or anything like that. Um, I I mean, I've had a fractured jaw, I'd rather my jaw be bust than my skull, personally. But yeah, absolutely ho ho wishing him a, a massive and speedy recovery. We're going to go to some calls now to get fans' views and opinions. First up, Aaron LFC is going to be with us. Aaron, welcome to the show, mate. What do you want to say? What's happening, Terry? So I just wanted to give my opinion on. Tiago, um, I've been watching him a lot lately. I feel like he's just trying too hard. Like the quality is there, it just seems like he's over, like he's overthinking a lot of things. Like even today, by the time he got taken off, he looked the most surprised that he got taken off. He shouldn't look surprised, you know. They, it wasn't a shock to me, anyways. But um, yeah, I think he'll come good as well as everyone else says. Eventually, once he gets used to the system, so on and so forth. Now going to the Champions League. Next, I don't see top four this year unless we win every game from now to the end of the season, and I don't see that happening. Um, so, and, But in regards to bringing in new players, I still think that we could bring in good players, not the Hollands and Mbappes without Champions League, but we could still bring in quality players that want to be at a big, prestigious club, right? Mm. Knowing that they're playing for club and knowing that they'll be back in the Champions League sooner than later, hopefully, you know? Yeah, I, I, I hear you on that. I, I think Thiago is definitely overthinking it. He, he, he knows he's struggling. He knows he hasn't had the impact he thought he would. And that can, that can lead to that kind of thing. Uh, Aaron, thank you very much for your call, mate. Really appreciate it, bro. Next up, Monsieur Ahmed with us. What are you saying, Monsieur? Hi, guys. Hi, Terry. Um, firstly, uh, thoughts and speedy recovery for Rui Patricio. Um, it's a nasty hair collision. So I want to get this out of the way that I think a lot of the blame go on the system referees and referees as opposed to VAR because you see sometimes... a offside that's like two yards and they still fail to put the flag up and for me that's the referees it's not the VAR's issue so I feel like VAR's kind of made them go back on their jobs and made them too slack for me but I think they need to fix up on that so again thoughts and prayers goes to the Um yeah it was a poor performance from us um, like Conroy said we can't really take any positives uh, the only positive is three points and Honestly, th honest thing, we got Tiago now as a meme. Whenever he takes does a foul, he does the big eyes things. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna get memed and clipped and captured on that. Um, but he's a liability. I mean, he just his fouls are just like he's one. He's always one foul away from getting a red card. But for me, he will be good in the preseason and get have a preseason, new season, and I think he'll come good. Overall, the team performance. I mean, Kabak and Phillips. I've said it to you, Terry, before. Play players in the natural natural positions. I mean, Phillips is not bad for a championship player. I mean, that's what some people claim, but um, he he kept two clean sheets so far. So, I mean, it's three points. You can't take any positives. And for me, top four is gone. I mean, we, we our egg, all our eggs need to go into the Champions League basket to get into the Champions League. Otherwise, finish outside top seven because I don't want to play Europa League football because that's just gonna hinder our season even more. But yeah, I think. I, I hear I hear you on that. Yeah, yeah I mean it's it's, it's obviously going to feel bitter as well um, in in relation to that. Imagine you know you go on. I know you're going to still celebrate your parade when it happens, but if you're in the Europa League or the Conference League, the Europa Conference, when I, I just I do like I know it sounds I genuinely genuinely mean this as a Man United fan. I'm like I just feel a bit gutted for you, like because that could happen. That could have happened to anybody, but it just so happened to be you. Do you get what I mean? Like. You could be yeah. celebrating your title win, knowing that next year you're heading into the conference, which is which is a madness, man. But uh, listen, uh, Monster, thank you very much for calling, bro. Really appreciate that. Next up uh, on the show, we're going to have Midu. Uh, Midu's a City fan. What are you saying, mate? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, mate. What do you want to say? Uh, first of all, um, thoughts and prayers go out to Rio Patricio. Such a bad injury. Um, and I wish him a speedy recovery. Um, get well soon, Rio Patricio. Now, talking around the game. Can you um, talk a little bit louder, please, bro? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, but you're just talking very softly, bro. Where are you? In the library. Oh. Okay. 
Um, can you hear me? Yeah, Good perfect. Day. Go for yeah. it. Go for it. Okay. Um, I thought Liverpool looked poor. Um, you know, it wasn't good performance from Thiago again. Uh, money was selfish. Um, but other positives, uh, perform, good performance by the other players for Liverpool, like Kabak, um, Phillips, Trent, Alexander, Arnold. Um, yeah, good win for Liverpool, but it wasn't a good performance. Um, I thought Wolves didn't uh, play well as well. Um, they should they should have had a penalty in, in the second minute. Um, yeah, they, they, I, don't, they, I don't know how I don't know how it was in a penalty uh, uh, awarded by the referee. I don't understand really. I don't know uh, wh what whether the ref uh, the officials on Stockley Park was uh, Stockley Park uh, sleeping or not. But anyway, um, maybe maybe they were just taking yeah, maybe they were just get, making a cup of tea for the game to start. Listen, yeah, Mido, but thank yeah, you good win, good win for Lovely. good win for Liverpool. But uh, it means nothing. They'll still finish. They'll still not finish in the top four. Yeah. Thank you very, very much, mate. Thank you very much indeed. Next caller is going to be uh, Mohammed. Uh, welcome to the show, mate. What do you want to say? Uh, so I just want to say, uh, it's all right result for us today, but if you want to have uh, a good end to the season, we have to start picking up results. No point winning a couple of games and losing a few games. Uh, top four seems... Very unlikely, unfortunately. Champions League is possibly the only way of us getting into some sort of European competition next season. And I just want to say uh, to the Wolves goalkeeper, hopefully he has a speedy recovery. Yeah, I mean, you're saying no champion. I, I, I'm sure his family will appreciate that massively. You say you say no Champions League football, like is it not qualifying for it via the top four? When you look at your Premier League fixtures, sorry, my screen keeps jumping when I'm loading. Sorry. I mean, it's only, I know it's only your second win in sort of 10 games or whatever, but you've got Arsenal, Villa, Leeds, Newcastle. Those next four games are very winnable, aren't they? No. Why? <laughs> no. It's to, do with our, it's to do with our home form. Our away form's all right. It's just our home form, which we seem to struggle on. Well, you've got Arsenal next away. You're the favourites for that game. Right? You've got Villa at home. You're the favourites for that game. Leads away, they're going to be open. They're going to be spread open, easy. You got Newcastle, they're dead, and then you got Man United. So I, I still don't think top four is completely and utterly over. Like to say it's just completely done and there's no chance. I think it's a little bit of a stretch. Any five points? I wasn't. I wasn't nine. saying it would be uh, completely over. Just very unlikely that we would get top four. Hmm. I'm saying I it's done. I'm coming. I'm. I I've said that a couple weeks I, ago. I, I personally think out of those games, the main problem that we have is is though is the low, lower it's level finishing game. ram like tonight again. It's a lucky goal. It's not a great finish, is it? And it's like we talk about leads, but I, Bamford can finish if he's if he's. I, fit. I, 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 I get it. We, we just I have mean, to take it one game at a time. To be honest, it, 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 well, we well, well, we've probably been doing that because we've had one good game and we're saying we're back for the past two months. So <laughs> that's what's been happening. So <laughs> Listen, Mohammed. Mohammed, thank you very much for coming on. Stroh's mm -hmm. back with us here on the terrace, mate. It's good to have you back, bro. Um, what's your thoughts on what everyone's saying here? Top four? Do you have a, any feeling that you could make it at all this year still? What are you saying? After the Fulham game, I thought there's no chance because we just look like we can't finish. We're not as potent in attack. Wasteful in front of goal. Mane just refuses to go down whenever he's clipped in the penalty area, which is absolutely driving me mad. I've lost count how many times where we should be going down for a penalty and he doesn't. But <laughs> so true. It's amazing. That's a great point. Honestly. But, yeah. but one thing I will say is that's now back to back clean sheets. Fabinho's playing at defensive mid, which you can see the difference instantly. Now we've seen a lot of talk of Klopp should have done that earlier. What people are forgetting is there were still injuries to the back line that Phillips has has picked up injuries. Whoever we seem to play at centre back has been getting injured this season. It's just it's a joke. But you can see that we're going in the right direction. My issue is is in tight games like yeah, it's a lucky goal tonight. If it's a tight game against the Manchester United away at Old Trafford, I don't fancy us to finish it this season. There's just something in this attack where it, it it's just not the same. Firmino's not been the same player for eighteen months. I've come on in numerous times and and criticised him because he's his goals dried up, yeah, but his overall gameplay is just non-existent these days, and, and that concerns me because 
that's something we need to address. Jot is a big one. If we had Jot through January, February, I don't think we lose the games that we lose, especially the Burnley at home. I think he scores the Origi chance. Yeah. But it's, I'm going to say no, but if we got it, it's it's one of them. I'm it's fifty fifty for me after tonight's performance. It's you look at Aston Villa last season when we were away. We, we didn't play well, but yet we still come out with a win. Sheffield exactly. United one 0 Ginny went out and we still come out with a win. It started to show signs of that where although we might not be playing great, we'll still pick up a win that would get us the top four. It's just whether we can maintain it, and that's been our problem this season. No, I I agree. And you, the only thing I would say that you're you, there's an outside chance of top four for Liverpool. I think what the reason you've still got an opportunity is that there's no sort of, there's no guarantee. When you look at the teams in front of you, and I was just looking at the league a few a few moments ago, I just want to get it up in front of me so I'm not was chatting. Five points behind Chelsea. Yeah, but, but what was it? Yeah, so the thing is, is that Chelsea can drop points. I know they've got Tuchel and done well, but it can happen. Leicester, you never quite know what's going to happen with them. I think Leicester, I think it's one place you're going for. I think Leicester and Manchester United are too far in front of you for you to catch yeah, them. Yeah. It's 11 points and, and 12 points behind Man United. That isn't going to happen. It's just Chelsea. I suppose the way what you, the way I would be looking at it if I was in that Liverpool camp is it's very hard for us to get back from this point. But we've just got to put ourselves, you've got to put yourselves into a position where if Chelsea did have a, a couple of bad games. You know, we don't, they don't know how to react after a, a two-call loss yet. It hasn't happened. You want to be ready to pounce. Where it would be frustrating is if you almost give up on this season. Yeah. Throw all your eggs into a Champions League basket and Spur, uh, sorry, and Chelsea do lose a couple of games on the bounce and, and, and there's an opportunity for you to jump in there and um, and, and catch them up. But it, it will be tough. When you look at it now in the cold light of day, I'm sort of staring at it now. It's, it is hard because like in terms of jumping above anybody else, you've got Everton and... Everton and Spurs have got a game in hand over you as well. So you've got to hope that they all don't drop points. It's going to be very, very tough indeed. Um, but it's, it's, I'm glad. I'm over the moon because it makes it harder for you to sign top targets next summer. But Liverpool being Liverpool, I remember a very famous time when you didn't make top four. <laughs> and then you went and won the bloody thing. And uh, it was like, ah, uh, absolutely, absolutely gutting. Uh, from a, a, a slightly separate subject, but on tonight's game, we obviously know that the Rue Patricio head injury was, was awful. Do you think there'll be a bit of a debate now and a bit of a push to kind of have the, the rulings and protocols change Has around the top sides? Has to be absolutely. A disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. And I've, I've criticised this for so long, not in terms of the Rue Patricio injury, because that's a freak injury. and It was disturbing to see. But my issue is, is when it's clear offside, why are they letting it play on? Because players can run back, they can pull a muscle, they can trip over, they can break their ankle, they can pop the knee, they can do anything. If it's as clear as day, and Salah was clearly offside, the linesman's in a great position. You train these linesmen on the positioning, you train it on everything we've seen, obviously the clip with Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher when they try to do it. These are elite professionals. They are paid the elite pay when it comes to linesmen, referees and stuff like that. VAR is protecting referees, and it's protecting linesmen, it's protecting referees from decisions, and it's kind of papering over their errors in terms of the, the Becker one. I don't know if you... I, I'm assuming you've already talked about it. Obviously, I've just got back from radio, but it, it's a blatant yeah, foul. Yeah. It's a blatant penalty. But for me, VAR saved the referee because they don't want to put it into the tally of, oh, he's made a mistake, let's let's overturn it, because then that looks like he's made so many mistakes this season that have been overturned, and that's the way that VAR's going, and that bothers me. The, for me... It, it, it just winds me up, because you look at... You look at the Patricio injury tonight, it's preventable. All you do is put your flag up instantly. No delay, just put your flag up instantly. If it's not, you deserve to be criticised for it because that's your job. You are a linesman. If you put your flag up and let's say, for example, it does over, it could have been a goal because he's not offside, that's that's them putting the impetus on the linesman. Not yeah, the, uh, that's that point winding yeah. up. We're taking the power away from him. It makes sense what you're saying, yeah, but you've got to think of it from the opinion of the linesman because Salah's one, I know you were saying it was blatantly offside, but I think it was still a bit tight and at the speed of these players, it's sometimes hard no, to see. No. And the thing is, I know it's, it's clearly off. Clearly. But even if, like, let's, even even if that was clearly off, yeah, it's just like the if you've got the option there that it's going to go to VAR, why as the linesman are you even going to take the risk of making the? That, 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 yeah, but that, that's the problem. That's the problem. This is why England 
don't have any referees or any officials in any of the major tournaments thinking like that. If you even think like that as a linesman or a referee, you've disgraced and you don't deserve to play the game. But it's At difficult no to point, be a lines person, though. You know, it's difficult. It's not like yeah, you saw the guy in everyone Jimmy Carger thing. It's yeah, like they thought it was on side, but it's on side. Sign up for. That's the job you said. Then we can't for. criticise before we VR. We brought VR because we criticise referees and lines persons so much well, that we I, said we need to make I, it better. So it's like, I, I, so I agree what you're saying, mate. I, but for me, there's too many tight ones. See, when it's the obvious ones, don't flag. Yeah, but VAR, you know, the, the, this thing about the game playing on, I get that it's partly, it's, it's, it's played a part in this injury that's happened. Um, if you got rid of it tomorrow and you just started blowing the whistle when a reliance on things outside, and then let's just say they give it, they Liverpool need to win to get into the top four, and they get a goal given as offside when it what like they get blown up for being offside. The whistle goes so that VAR then can't come into play, and it turns out it was onside. There'll be outrage about that. The, the problem is with football fans, and I'm not defending the protocol that's been put in place here about offside specifically. The problem is with football fans is when we didn't have it, we moaned when offside goals were scored or onside goals were given as offside. We cried and moaned about it. Now that we've got it, we're moaning that the delayed response could lead to an injury. In today's case, it has done. If they removed it tomorrow, we go back to moaning about the other thing. We have a propensity just to want to moan in general. And the only thing I agree on that's gone that's terrible right now with VAR is what Stro just said. I feel like the overturned decisions now are not happening because the VAR, the, the VAR referee is protecting his colleague. He's saying, yeah, you messed up, mate, but I'm, I'm not going to do anything about it because it's you that's going to be criticised. And that's what's wrong with it. For me, I actually don't mind referees. Make, like Referees are going to make mistakes because they're human beings. Every player, everybody in their job makes a mistake. For me now, though, they're protecting those mistakes being made. And that's infuriating fans more because the idea of VAR was to stop it. So Arsenal's handball for a, a, a penalty for a clear handball. VAR should be intervening with that, like that shadow of a doubt. They even had it recently with, with, with both of, uh, in the Sheffield United, Manchester United game. Clearly, but like the Sheffield United player, rugby tackles, David De Gea. They don't do anything because, like, oh, we missed it, but it's okay. And then they give a foul for a nothing push in the back. Well, the goalie pushes uh, uh, Maguire in the back. He falls over and the referee blows. And again, after the game, they've gone, actually, if we'd have actually assessed that right, we would have overturned both those decisions. Fans don't want to hear that. You want to you want to see that done in the moment at the right time. And if they're going to use VAR as a tool to protect referees, you might as well scrap it because you're going to get the same level of mistakes, aren't you? <laughs> like, well, this, is, this is my point and this is my issue with VAR. So, like I said, there's a reason why England haven't had our elite referee, whoever it is, referee at the highest level since a certain age or since a certain year or whatever it is. The the issue with VAR isn't VAR, it's the people that are using it. And it's because it's the English officials still. The English officials are not good enough. There's a reason why earlier in the season they tried to take VAR away from us because we were using it incorrectly and we weren't using it to the protocols that we were told we were meant to be using it for, which is why they're making more changes come the end of the season. And what frustrates football fans is you look at you go on Twitter and you see the Australian VR. The people who are watching the telly can clear as day here what the VR man is saying to the referee, why he's sending him over to the to the monitor, what he's going to show him, what replay he's going to show him from what angle and what his view is, but he wants his opinion. We're not getting any of that. So when you see a decision like the the Sheffield United Manchester United game, the Sheffield United goal never should have stood, and United goal should have stood, but it just doesn't make any sense. And then you look at uh, Alisson I agree Ray tonight. And then you look at the Allison one tonight. It's a strong I couldn't, agree with, you more. I couldn't and, agree with you more. And and, and the bit this is my issue. No, I, I I totally agree. And this is the thing: there's no transparency. And the reason why I say that the example of Australia doing it right is because they care about making the right decision for the game. Because the game having the that's why I don't, by the way, have an issue. Never have had an issue. And I I was a match going fan for many years with the. Oh, uh, well, if there's, if there's a you score a goal and then it gets taken away or you score a goal and it's a delay and you don't celebrate at the right time, it ruins a match day experience. I, I was a match going fan for 10 years straight. I tell you what the worst experiences I've ever had as a fan is where your team loses or draws and then you go, you get back home or you go back outside, you get outside the stadium, look on your phone and the goal that was given us offside is clearly onside. 
That, for me, is far worse than a celebration being delayed by 30 seconds. And that's what VAR was brought in for. And as I say, now I feel like it's being twisted into this this weird tool to ensure that the referees come out smelling of roses. It's, it's, it's awful. I mean, you even had that City goal a few weeks ago that was about 45 yards offside. They all defended it. The referees' union defended it. Three days later, they tried to sneak it in and <laughs> change the fucking rulings or the, the interpretation had changed. It's like, oh, you guys are mugs. You just made a mistake in real time. And you're sick and tired of being called out on it. Real strong referees are happy to go, oh, didn't see that. Yep, reverse decision. People respect you when you admit your faults and you and, and you admit your mistakes. These referees now, I just haven't really got. I it's like Lee Mason. It's like, sorry, I do it's think that like there is a right. problem, though. Like, there is definitely an issue. It's always like blaming the referees and not looking at it from another angle. Like, what I'd say, Stroh, is I, before I agree what you're saying about the offside thing, I just think there's too many tight ones. But the problem I've got is... Right, let's you, you Australia make them up, right? And we all say it's the referees who don't want that. And, you know, I, I do question some of the competency, some of the English refs, but there's also some good ones as well, but we never praise them. It's always just referees. You know, they've got to do the same as players on that pitch are getting played, quadruple the wages they're getting paid as well. And it seems to be they take the same amount of abuse or more, which I think, again, is another issue. That's a culture issue. But my the problem I've got is... See the mic thing, I guarantee that's because Australian football show more respect to referees on the pitch because footballers in this country, the English, could not be trusted not to swear or show. And we know they, they swear constantly. You hear it with no fans. So that that's not just a referee's I, I do, problem. I do get that. I do get it. But it's so easy to solve. It's so easy to solve. You, you literally walk into the, the clubs and you say, if you swear at the referee... Instant red. The problem is in this country, not just in football, in life, we are so soft with punishment. I've said before, right? I won't take it outside of football. I could, st- I could stop time wasting tomorrow. I could end time wasting tomorrow. You got less. You got ten seconds to take goal kicks and throw ins and whatnot. If you any longer, the other team gets a penalty. It's done. Nobody, nobody can time. No one can take two minutes taking a goal kick anymore. We just don't like severe punishments in this country. We're weird. Like for me, I'm all right. So you do this. You say to the footballers, if you swear at the referee in any capacity, instant red card. If your team does it more than five times in a season, 10-point deduction. You end it tomorrow. You end it tomorrow. We're too soft and weak in this country. That's what, that's what happens in rugby, doesn't it? If you swear at the umpire, if you swear at the referee, you get I, I played rugby once. Well, I played a few times. I celebrated getting a decision too too loudly in front of a ref. He reversed the bloody decision. He said, that's not very sporting. Reverse decision. <laughs> and, and another time, I swore during a... During a, I had a it was, we had a rugby... Uh, he was more of a rugby teacher c- refereeing the football match. And I swore. And it wasn't like an aggression. We had a player called Blair, real quick geezer, sprinting down the wing with a ball. And I just said, run like the effing wind or something. I don't even know why I said it. Young. He turned around... Right, and you awarded a free kick to the other team for worst standing. Sent me off, and I was like, "Sir, I'm from your school." He went, "I don't care," and that was my learning curve. Is that? Is that? If my school teacher could teach this, this, is, not this, this is, is not soccer. This is not soccer. In, fo- right? in, football, in football, the players don't show any respect to the referee, which is which has been a massive problem. Like if you if you if you if you look at cricket, I know one of my mates swore at an umpire. He got kicked out of the game because he swore at an umpire. This is the point. This is the thing, right? This is what we would do, and it's on the fans and it's on the clubs. If to, I'm going to use it, if Jordan Henderson got sent off tonight because he swore at or in and around the referee in that scenario, he'd be defended by his club and by the fans. How you fix this, again, it would be instill the rule and then self-policing. So if Henderson or if McTominay got himself sent off for swearing, the response from the fans of his club is, that's on you, you dick. That's on you, not the referee. And we have to adopt that mentality. And again, you get that in. I, I've watched rugby with a lot of rugby fans. Different. They'll see like a. I was watching England versus Ireland play once. Right? I was in Ireland, and this Irish lad ended up like he committed a few two, the penalty, the same penalty two or three times, and ended up getting simbin. All the fans in there, the Irish, were having to go at him, not the ref, not for England, for him for being stupid about doing it. And until fans adopt that mentality as well, I'm going to blame my my own rather than someone else. It's never going to get any better. Uh, final caller of the night, uh, LFC Sunnies with us. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, good. In terms of that performance, I don't think there's too much to say, to be honest. Uh, in the whole scheme of things, I don't think it means too much. But I really wanted to know, what, what did you lot say about Nat Phillips tonight? Oh, he was so good. Was, no, I didn't even get I, to mention I, it yet. Yeah. 
Do you know, Bad every thing. single game that goes on, he just seems to get better and better. This, this is what I want to say. Do you lot think it's a coincidence that this guy comes in every single game he's played has been amazing? There's no coincidence. If we look at what games these Liverpool defenders have played, Nat Phillips is his second best centre-back at, Liv at, Li at Liverpool. If we're looking at the games they've played, why not? Do you know what? Also, yeah, sorry, the commentator said something which is quite interesting, saying that walking into a team, especially like Liverpool, a team that's struggling, it's so much harder to find your feet on a team like that. Yeah, hundred percent. Despite the fact that he was not even meant to be a Premier League player and blah blah blah, meant to go America and whatnot, comes into the Premier League and then finally makes his first appearance for Liverpool. He played all right, and it's just got better and better. And now he's just turned into like. Yeah, you know, yeah. No, you know what? A lot of people take yeah. the piss out of me for this, but I think he's a he's a very similar player to Maguire. I think if he was in that Man United team. I think he does on bar with Maguire, if I'm going to be completely honest. And for £80 million pounds to, to a free sign, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> I think, Sonny, though, I think, Phillips, I'm, uh, again, guys, I think Kabak a better game. Phillips had a few mistakes tonight that West, uh, the Wolves nearly got oh, in. Brilliant. At the yeah. end, that's his fault. And he committed early that they nearly got yeah. in when Morgan Gibbs White came in. So we need to be fair and not go overhype. I think Phillips has been much better in Kabak. Uh, you know what? I don't, I don't think Kabak he's overhyping. i got to say, how long no, has no, this guy I, been no, playing no, for I agree, I agree before the Sonny, tonight though, I just think he had a few mistakes tonight. It was good tonight. Yeah. It was great against Leipzig. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. I think, overall, was good over, tonight. I think we can agree overall when he came in uh, from uh, made a man match performance against West Ham to now, he's been absolutely astounding. Growing noise, been growing. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Conroy. I feel like a part of the mistakes that he's making and everything is due to the fact that he's building confidence on the pitch. And, and naturally, as a team, we had Van Dyke at the back before. And we tried to get Matt to do it as well, playing passes out from centre back, more um, attacking passes so we can convert yeah. the game. And I feel 100% like safe. You know, I'm Nat Phillips' biggest fan, mate. I just think no, no, tonight, no, no. it was just the back who's the best one tonight for me. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, well, he's still finding his feet with the club. And I feel like they're trying to get this part out of him that doesn't really exist within him. Like, he's a great defender, don't get me wrong. Amazing headers, great clearances, and just no nonsense. But when it comes to playing the ball out, He's, yeah, he's it's poor. poor. It is poor. But I, I just, I can't get past how good he's been. I'm sorry. A free signing. This guy was meant to be going to, who, what, who was it? Swansea? Yeah, oh. Swansea. I look at him now. I'm not being funny. He's our best centre-back right now. There's not many, but he's our best centre-back right now. And like I said, if we're looking off games that have been played, our second best centre-back. Yeah, you know what? Speaking of defenders, yeah, I think Kabak needs to come into the mix as well a little bit because... He played with his brain today for the first time in a long time. Well, I wouldn't say first time in a long time. <laughs> I, I, I would say first time, to be honest. That's what I'm saying. That's why I haven't given Kabak enough credit, because I think today was that one performance where it's given me confidence for him. Yeah, and you know what? He's scared me. Go on, Stro. I've got a question. So, Sonny, second best centre-back in, in what sense? In the games they've played for Liverpool, forget about trophies, forget about everything. In the games they've played for Liverpool, I'm saying that Nat Phillips is his second best centre back at Liverpool. The season, in terms of Gomez, Van Dijk, I mean Gomez, yeah. like out of everyone. Yeah, everyone. Really? Are you really? No, about look, don't get me wrong. About... I, I, I know this sounds mad, but think about it. The games they've played, games they've played. Nat Phillips has not stepped a foot wrong in a Liverpool shirt. Have... So it's, like, it's been early. It oh, has been one early. Sec, one sec, one sec. So what you're saying is when everybody's back fit, it should be... No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. I know what you're doing here. I know what you're no, doing. No, I'm asking a question. I'm trying to understand because the concept. You just said second Look, is best centre back. So therefore, if everyone... No, 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 no. This is different. Back. This is why I said the games that they've played. If we're being completely honest, when Van Dijk comes back, I think we know Gomez suits him better. I think now Phillips has done everything he deserves to, to get that chance next to Van Dijk. But if we're being honest... From the system we play, when Van Dijk is here, passing out from the back is crucial. Nat Phillips doesn't have that. From what This is why I say second best centre-back at the club right now, because look at the games they've played. Don't get me wrong, Nat Phillips probably won't play next to Van Dijk. Gomez will. Matip probably would over Phillips. Okay, but this is, it's from the games they've played. Oh, okay. he's, certainly done, look, he's certainly done well. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. But, Jez, I'd love to sit here and chat chat more tonight, but I do have to go. Got early start tomorrow. Everybody that's tuned in this evening, thank you. Please make sure you smash that like and that share button. Back tomorrow morning with more content for you. Big game for Chelsea tomorrow. So we're going to be live throughout the course of the day. Just football every single day now. It's absolutely amazing. Well done to Liverpool tonight. Three more points in the bag. We heard some good reports that Ruby Patricia is doing well, actually. Um, yeah. According to the medical report. So yeah. it's good to hear that. Wishing him a very speedy recovery as ever. But until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again soon. Oh.